Hi friends! As you can see, we're diving back into Mel Cosmetics Gemini 1 and 2. My original plans, however, today was to review and create looks using Artist Couture Supreme Mauves. Unfortunately, Supreme Mauves is not scheduled to arrive until tomorrow, but I will be at Maddie's house. And if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia. I'm an online coach. I love movement. I love beauty. And I also babysit Maddie, a little Westie that I've known for almost a decade now. All that to say, I won't be here when Supreme Mobs arrives. And when I'm over there, I'm visiting Bay when I'm done. So I won't get this palette up until maybe next week. However, I thought this will be an ideal opportunity to use Gemini 2 again. Again, if you haven't seen my first video, I will post the link up above and down below. I had mentioned at the time that I wanted to revisit this palette, create more looks, and also revisit the original Gemini, which I haven't used in quite some time, so I thought it appropriate to uh, get back in. I also applied some of Melt's blush products, the Digital Blush Duo in Raw Honey, on top of Sundown, the Cream Blush Light. So I applied this first, and then I went in with Raw Honey and dusted a touch of Genesis on top of everything. So... There's a little bit of texture, as you can see, because all the formulas are baked. Well, obviously not the cream one, but I'm not mad at this finish. I kind of like it. So that inspires me to use these cheek products more often. But with all the intro stuff out the way, why don't you come in a little closer? That's enough. I have Linda's primer on the eyes and I wanted to begin with Gemini 2. In my head, I was calculating, figuring out which look I should begin with. And I think I want to start with a halo eye, setting up the look first with Love Sick. And this is one of my Misohope brushes. I'll make sure to type all tools down below. I knew this will pack a punch when applied directly on the lids. However, I did find during my first video when I applied these shades over another matte that the color showed up well. It did not look too weak on the lids. It had good stick, whereas sometimes when you layer on mattes from Melt, they're a little dry and very pigmented, so sometimes like that, I can't find the word. That adherence isn't there, but if you really want to get the color down stat, you just go directly on the lids. And this is a squirrel brush, very soft, softer than a goat one. Perhaps not ideal to actually blend out the shades, but to place it on initially, I think is a good matchup. Now with something much lighter, let's go in with Ladylike. This is also a Mizuho brush, but now we'll pull that color through the crease, combining both. So you see what happened here? The top part of the application blended away, but I'm not too concerned as I'm confident we can reapply Lovesick successfully and build up the color again. And why don't we do that? I'm taking the original brush with Love Sick, reintroducing the shade onto my outer V and perhaps rebuilding that color so it can show up more prominently. And pulling that shade down to the lower lash line, not overtaking it, just a quarter in. And using soft strokes here on the edges of the shadow so it can appear much softer. And I think I'll keep the shape round. I usually take it out so it has a, a finer point at the end of the blend, but I think halo eyes have a, a nicer appearance when the corners are rounder. Maybe not, I guess, depending on your eye shape, but on this particular, this particular moment right now, I'm taking it round. Ladylike is doing a phenomenal job blurring the edges. I did get a little messy here, and if you haven't visited my videos, I do love to have a, a brush, whichever one I used to apply my concealer on standby, to serve as my eraser 
right to buff away a little bit of product and you can go back in. This brow hair is driving me nuts. Build color back on, reshape the blend, but that's not bad. I, th I think I like what's happening. And this brush is incredibly soft, so it won't over manipulate the shadow where it will look uneven and splotchy. It's going to move the pigment around just enough. How's that? I do want to add some LX Queen over Love Sick to really deepen here the intensity of the smokiness. Now we can apply, well, we could do two things. I went over to Melt IG and I saw Laura do the green on the bottom and all rosy burgundy on the top, which is a great way to go. But in my head, wondering if we should go in with Mateo on the center between the wine and the burgundy shade. And I am applying that shade with my finger as I feel this delivers the most stick and even application. Matteo has a little more sparkle than Schmood. Schmood is more of a burnished finish, whereas I feel you get more of a golden sparkle sparkly finish from Matteo. And I know this is very contrasting to have a green between a burgundy and a wine, but you know what? I'm just, we gotta, we gotta know by trying. A smaller shader brush to carefully carve under my crease line so the shades don't travel too high. And going back in with Lovesick to dust the edges of Matteo so that they appear smoother in the transition, that those lines don't look as abrupt. Okay, I don't hate it. I like what's happening. This is fine. Because we have the Digital Dust duos on standby, I thought to perhaps apply this highlight shade as my inner corner highlight and the sticker is still on the mirror because the other shades in Gemini 2 are, are rather rich and we love that. But if you wanted some highlight, you will have to dip out depending on your skin tone. But I feel if you're watching this video, you have a lot of makeup, you might have already done your blush and highlight and you might have one of these products on standby. So it wouldn't be too much of a challenge to then pick up another product for your highlighted purposes. It's very smoky, it is very smoky, but it doesn't look as crazy as, I guess in my head I envisioned it to be. All right, we're going to Gemini number one. It's been a minute, I adore these shades, mossy, grungy greens with the mustardy tones here. And much like what we did over in Gemini 2, you can combine the moss with the neutrals. However, I do feel there's more of a cohesiveness here when combining both sides, whereas in Gemini 2, this isn't bad, but I feel when mixing a mustardy brown with a mossy, grungy green, it works out better. You know what, let's see, let's go in the traditional beauty influencer way where we apply a crease shade first. Now, from what I remember, the number one critique about Gemini was the mattes, how tough they were to work with, they're very pigmented and they take a lot of blending, perhaps not an ideal matchup with a novice, one who doesn't use a lot of indie makeup and all that. But I feel if you're intermediate pro, you, you can handle these shades. Even if you're not, you can still make it happen with just a little bit of strategy. So I applied Lorelei through the crease and you can see just that mustard hue coming forward right away. Let's go in with Leo. Leo is this gorgeous green, which again, because of the mustardy undertones of Lorelei, I feel just pairs beautifully well with these tones, much more so than the mossy greens found in Gemini 2 with the roses. I'm using a shader brush to lay down the majority of the product on the outer lid and using the tip of the brush, which is rather soft and flexible, to then pull the rest of the color through the crease evenly and hopefully in a manner that appears soft, 
and even. How does that look? Not too bad. I don't feel it's... Maybe these mats improved. I don't know. I haven't used the old Gemini in quite some time. So I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I'm just tapping more on the outer V so it can look more prominent there. A little bit of Fire OG I think will fare nicely next to Leo. I think that's a lovely gradient from the deeper moss into the lighter mossy green, yeah. Bonnie, you can use to adjust the smokiness of any of the shades here. If you wanted a little bit of, then taking Bonnie just right here on the very edge of your outer lash line. Even I went in with too much. I mean, a little goes a long way, but I'm gently flicking the color up towards where the majority of Leo rests on the outside of my lid to create like that, that gradient of smoke, right? That starts from lash line and just gradually lifts towards the crease, but not to entirely take over the outer lid. What I'm excited to report is that Goals has a little more to the formula is a little more sticky, which I found in the original Gemini. I mentioned this in my first video. It was softer. It didn't have, the particles were more spread out and the actual metallic felt softer, but drier at the same time. This has a little more stick to it. So let's take Leo with my shader here and I'll place it where there is no shadow, where Fire OG Stopped. You gotta do a little wiggle, do a little wiggling to pick up enough product. And I think in that way, you'll get the right amount of lay down. You could use your finger, but I was pretty tight inside the eye and I felt I would have used a shader eventually just to clean up the edges. Now with Gemini, I express the same uh, sentiments in regards to the texture. Is a little more stick. I think there's more consistency in goals than Gemini. Gemini has a little more flake to it. Not terrible, but let's place it there on the inner corner. Going in with Leo on the outer V here. Just tracing it along just like that. Taking Fire OG along the rest of the lash line here. And now with my soft brush, I'll take Lorelei under everything, and this is going to kick up the haze a ton. I will skip this step if you don't want your shadow to drop too low, but this is a look I think people gravitate towards, especially when using Gemini, because again, the grungy colors inspire that technique of the shadow overtaking not only a lot of the lid, but the lower lash line as well. And I feel these mustardy tones deliver that feel perfectly. All right, let's apply some lashes and I'll be right back. There's a lot of trucking going on outside my window. I apologize for the background noise in advance. I'm so sorry. Here are the final looks from round number one. Don't hate how the green and rose tones turned out together. I like it, it is very smoky, so perhaps in the next round we'll play with lighter looks with the lighter rosier tones and see how we can incorporate the green, maybe in the same way Laura did on her Instagram post. And Gemini one is a classic. I think this is one of the most unique color stories ever that I have in my collection, and I understand why it was well sought after on its first release and how people highly anticipated its return just because you can dissect this with just using greens, just using the mustard browns, or combining them in a way that just works. It has beautiful flow with the undertones, I think, being optimal for one another, whereas this one, maybe not as ideal. There's a little more contrast when combining green and rose burgundy wine tones, but it can work. It could work, so let's try this again. I gotta put the potatoes in the oven for dinner, so I'll be back with clean eyes, and let's get started. Round two ensues, and as I had mentioned before, try not to do what I did in my first video. I should have taken notes. Let's see how the greens overlap the, sorry Mike, overlap the more rose tones. So let's take Sweetheart, which is 
more of a mid-tone rose. One of my most favorite shades in the palette in terms of blendability, softness. The color itself, great to just wear solo across the crease lid and some down under the lash line. Let's take Boy Mum. Boy Mum is a, a dark, it's a cool dark green, but because now we are placing that over the rose shade, I just wanna see what type of look that will create. Now you can go much simpler and apply Sweetheart all over the lid and perhaps use Boy Mum as a wing liner. So it's not going to have as prominent of a placement as it does here. But if you wanted to integrate the shade in some fashion, not in this way, but in some way, you can just do it across the lash line. Taking some Almond Eyes, which is a lighter shade but through the crease, lightly along the edges of Boy Mum. And I think that's going to be a, an acceptable transition. It won't overtake Sweetheart. You still see the rose shade peeking through from up top, but that will create a softer gradient. Now some of Boy Mum lifted off the skin and I'll just go back in. Hey Rhymes, to reintroduce the shade, make sure it looks even and all that. We'll also pull it down the outer quarter here, not all the way. Almond eyes again, but bracketing that shade. I could have done Sweetheart. Maybe I can still. I'm gonna do a little lower, bring a little lower still. All right, I brought out the haze a little bit. Not too bad, it's not as a disaster as I was I need to be more optimistic. And now we can try Schmood on the rest of the lid. Let's pick up my shader again. Actually, let me pick up the smaller version from the Koyuro Kakishibuzomi line. This is, I believe it's either, it's either number four or five, but I will make note of the number down in the description box. Placing this on the inner part of the lid, overlapping it with Boy Mum. I might have to apply it more boy mum here on the edges. So let's tap boy mum here where it meets Schmood. A little bit of almond eyes on the inner part. I know this might be a strange choice, but I think going between the rose and the green and the rose and the green could bring out something interesting. For this, for this, we could do Bella. Bella is the lightest shade here in the palette. It's a very peachy coral shade, which, you know, not terrible on the inner lower lash line. That works. And then Boy Mum, just to bring it in more. This time I'll go into Genesis for the inner corner highlight. Again, simply because I have the compact here. And if you have a highlighter or cheek product on standby that you can use for inner corner highlight, go for it. You know what I wanna do? I want to combine the mustardy browns with the roses, which I understand not possible if you don't have both palettes, but if you do. Let's see how that goes, because we've seen a lot of Gemini combinations. That first demo was just to get it out of me. I was dying to combine these shades again. But let's start off with Polka Dot. Polka Dot takes on a, a heartier dose of brown, still with that mustardy undertone. Just going in, ensuring that it looks smooth. There is a lot of kickback in the pan. These definitely perform more like pigments versus shadows, but think if you just get your blend on, you'll be all right. Just pulling it down here. This color on its own, fabulous. Now, what if we did Hemelas? Let's see, let's see. This is a, uh, huh. I'm just taking the same brush and pouncing that color on the outer lid. That's not bad. It's leading us into that sickly look, which I'm not mad at. There's not much contrast between the two shades because I think they're both mid-tone in intensity, so that's understandable. Perhaps, however, we can do the following. Going in with Gemini with my finger first, and then I'll bring in a smaller shader. Yeah, Gemini, even though it has more stick, 
it's just more flaky. The shine is amazing. There's just a flakiness where I feel people are not going to love this shade as they would a more traditional metallic one. For instance, standby. I took out Supreme Nudes because I thought Supreme Miles was arriving today, so I was getting prepared. Opulence, which I feel is a similar shade to Gemini, I, I feel it just has a little more smoothness to it, where Gemini, the flakes, like... It's, it reminds me of the new product from Danessa Myricks, those flaky flakes. That's kind of what Gemini looks like when placed on the lid. I don't know how people are going to receive that. I don't know how they're going to feel about it. It's more of a scatter-like effect. So I think we might have to wet this shade, which I invite you to do and try. See what happens. Alex Queen with this mini shader abort that mission. I'm taking a different brush instead. Where is it? My Koyuro Yoshiki brush with LX Queen. This is a great liner brush here. I'm gonna pull it across the lash line to create a little more contrast, as well as intensity. Bring it up a little bit, see what that does. Okay, I like that. I like the more burgundy shade combined with the rosy and a little bit of the mustard. Not too bad. And on this side, we completed the look. Lash is coming right up. Final looks from round number two. I rather enjoy how these looks turned out. Beginning to get a better feel for Gemini 2. Happy that we combined both on this side. And the more I play with the rosy burgundies and greens in Gemini 2, combining them, I now have become a lot more comfortable doing so. Although I understand someone's apprehension in combining the shades, you don't have to. You can keep them completely separate and just rely on the three greens here at the end of the palette to create a look almond eyes to the crease boy bum for intensity and smokiness and mateo on the lid however you want to go about it and the majority of the palette again contains the rosy burgundy maroon shades i think combining them is fun it looks like a rose you know it gives you that feel roses have the stem and the thorns and the leaves with the rose colored petals so it's it's all in there okay the mustard with the rosy tones Think you can do something with that. Combining the mustardy browns from Gemini 1 with the roses in Gemini 2 is fun. I think you can play with that a little bit more. Perhaps use Lovesick LX Queen to create more smoke on the outer corner with the more neutral mustard browns. The Gemini shade, when it settles on the lid, it definitely has, again, more of a flaky scatter effect. It doesn't have the same consistency as Schmood found in Gemini 2. More of a metallic, not as shiny, sparkly, more subtle, more of a, like a, a burnished finish. But I enjoy these looks. So let's do one more because I, you know, I'm trying to challenge myself and thinking outside the box. So let's take this off and uh, I'll be right back. Let's start on the Gemini 1 side and go in with Mochi. Mochi is just highly unique in terms of its tone. It's like a mustard chartreuse and i think one of the most beloved shades out of the entire palette now as you can see mochi has more of a green undertone compared to the more mustard brown undertones on this side of the palette because i understand even on the eye they might be hard to distinguish but they are are quite different Ooh, ran out of room so those are the two. You see that Mochi has more green, that Lorelei has more of the mustard yellow. If you wanted, you can go in with Cupcake on the outer V, or you can stay exclusive to the greens and build up that shade. Just so you can see, I'll go in with Fire OG on the outer part of the lid, and pairing this color with Mochi, I think will bring out more of its green undertone. I'm actually bringing it pretty far in on the lid, but making sure there's plenty there to create that smoke. A little bit of Leo now on the outer V still to create even more depth here. And why not let's start building out the lower lash line. Let's kick off the blend with Leo. I'm tapping the color 
on the outer edges so it doesn't look uneven but this is the second time I removed shadow and at this point the skin around my outer lids become a little dry just become a little dry so that makes it very tough for especially matte shadows to stick to but I think we're gonna be okay you could keep this all matte I think that's what I'll do we can go in with goals I think that is the obvious choice but I, th I think I want to commit to like an all green matte eye here so now with fire OG I'm tapping that on the majority of the lid and I think that's quite nice very soft even application doesn't look spotty uneven skipped whatsoever I'm just bringing in a little bit of Leo here in the outer part and we have plenty of mochi I think on the the outer corner if you wanted you can use goals as the standout inner corner shade and I think for, for my skin tone anyway still light enough to get away with highlighting benefit nice surprise to have the majority of the eye blended with matte and now the inner corner has that pop of shine you can go in with bonnie for some liner action you know what i think i'll take that step now with the smaller liner brush from the yoshiki line this has such a flexible tip it just makes shadow line application a breeze i don't want to take it too far out if you're scared with this shade just stop right here on the lash line right there if you want to take it up you can start to form the wing but i don't want a super big wing right now just just enough get a little smoke drop it into ladylike through the crease first this is more of a peachy hue so it's going to start off very light off the bat but i want to pair that with lx i think you know we're we're moving into very smoky territory quickly but just to see how this turns out i'm tapping back into lx queen because i want the outer edges of the lid to look a little smoother back in with ladylike but more on the the edge of that blend Ooh, let you know what i i stopped myself boy mom the green let's do the green instead because perhaps we can mimic what laura did i had mentioned that in the beginning at some point in this video but where where did that idea go alicia you totally screwed up mateo on the majority of the lower lash line but you know what i think i want to blend out all these shades with almond eyes now if you take this step it's going to look very smoky here underneath if you wanted you can take one of these shades maybe fire og so it could look extra sickly green oh my gosh we are committing we are we are committing okay we're committing to the look to the cause a little bit of goals just to brighten the inner lower lash line and then as it swims into mateo i think that's a nice gradient yeah that provides the right amount of brightness but it's still green so stays within that color family what are we gonna put here on the lid Ooh, we could do luna we didn't do luna yet you could have also went in okay you could have done bella ladylike sweetheart or gamelas if you wanted this to be more smoky you could also go with lx queen all over the lid but with the green on the lower lash line right now that is a heavy evening smoky look it could be your grocery shopping day look fine as well but i thought why not let's try luna just to see what that will do because since everything else is pretty smoky just to have this soft beige on the inner part of the eye i dig it now we don't have anything different on the inner corner i'm not entirely mad at that it's okay it's fine to leave it bare luna just you know mattified it a little bit it probably gave it some of that beige color so we're gonna keep it like that let us conclude this final round by slapping on some lashes and i'll be right back and here is round number three i have to say this session concluded my thoughts on both palettes one being that gemini 2 is fantastic i think 
one of the better performing palettes and while I don't consider myself to be an ultra milk cosmetics expert I have experienced a lot of their palettes from their stacks through the first palette which was Gemini a few years back my favorites out of the collection would be rust that is my all-time all-time I know there's 420 which people love because majority of the shades in there were matte she's in parties people really liked I like it but not as much as other palettes palettes with similar tones while I understand that color story is geared to be more gothic well excuse me more goth lolita I felt when all shades were combined there was little nuance that the shades were hard to identify on the list and why I have to use more strategy in approaching that palette but the the Gemini 2 is fantastic I'm a sucker for rose tones the fact that they included some greens in here I thought a great move and challenges the makeup wearer to reach new heights of color combination with the green and the rose how that looks this perhaps is my most favorite combination when putting together the greens and the roses from all the looks I have done I think it's subtle but beautiful I do like a hazier look especially when using Mel cosmetic shadows I mean you got to go there because that that is the aesthetic of the brand and committing to a matte lid with the bay shade from Gemini 2 I thought it was a great move and what can, you know what let me know friends if you have the first Gemini and you picked up the newer one are these mattes softer to you are they a little easier to blend maybe because at the time when I use the first Gemini I didn't have my brushes I didn't have great technique okay that could be it maybe it's the same formula but because of my upgraded tools and a better understanding for blending on my part perhaps this fell a lot better to use those were the variables I encountered but with all that to say I think these are one of the more solid offerings from Mel Cosmetics again considering the inconsistencies I've experienced and this is not to force you to buy them again I remember several strong statements saying that you are done with milk cosmetics and you're finished with them I get it but the reason why I come back is just for their unique uh, color combinations that yes I always give them a chance sometimes it is hit or miss and I know that is a risk I take as a consumer but generally very happy with these two so let me know down below again if you received or bought rather Gemini 1 and 2 if you have the old Gemini you bought the new one you have just Gemini 2 what you've been thinking about the palettes how have you been combining the shades some faves and not so faves I'll see you down in the comments fam and until then that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Mel Cosmetics Extravaganza, monthly favorites or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.